Carrasco, the Vice President of Public Programs with Prospect Park Alliance, the nonprofit that sustains Prospect Park, Brooklyn's backyard. We're excited to partner with the Flatbush-based cultural organization, Caribbean, to celebrate Caribbean American Heritage Month. This event also marks the launch of Pop-Up Lefferts, a new initiative that brings the educational programs we offer at the park's historic house on the road, while the house undergoes restoration later this year. I would like to thank our sponsor, New York Presbyterian Brooklyn Methodist Hospital for their support of this program. Before starting, just a few rules of the road. For those joining us on Zoom, you will be muted during this program. Please enjoy our 30 minute video and feel free to submit questions via chat on Zoom or via comments on our Facebook simulcast. Following the video, we will be in conversation with our guest artist who will field your questions. Now, I would like to introduce Kenya Cummings with Caribbean, who will introduce our guest today. And I would like to thank her, Jean-Luc Stanislas, Shelley Worrell, Nadine Shelton, and Rafe Schaefer for their great work on this program. Kenya? Hi, my name is Kenya Cummings, and I am the Special Projects Coordinator for Caribbean. Based right here in Little Caribbean, it is home of one of the largest and most diverse communities. Caribbean is a thriving organization dedicated to collaborating with some of the Caribbean's most visionary talent and innovative brands. Our cultural platform stands at the crossroads of film, art, culture, and many more. We've recently hit our 10th year and we are so excited to kick off our second annual pop-up efforts with Prospect Park Alliance in celebration of Caribbean American Heritage Month. Today we have Perry Boyce, an online fragrance company based in Brooklyn, offering urban inspired home scents and gifts to consumers wanting to create a unique home environment. Created as a response to receiving a candle with very little scent throw, Perry Voice aims to fill your space with great smells because nothing is better than having a nice smelling home. Also, we do want to say with the current climate, the Caribbean team would like to say we stand in solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement. I'm so glad you all could join us today for the virtual series and I hope you join us for the rest. Please enjoy. This is Eliana, Daphne, and Indica, a few of the thousands of people who define how amazing things never stopped happening here at New York Presbyterian Columbia and Weill Cornell Medicine. In our hardest hours, our dedicated teams saw us through, and today they have their next appointment because these same amazing people who kept them safe are here for you now, online and in person. Everybody and welcome. I'm Rafe with the Prospect Park Alliance here with Tracy today from Perry Boyce to learn a little bit about making candles. Some of the earliest candles come from the Roman time uh, and they were often made of congealed animal fat known as tallow. They would be made of beef fat, they would be made of sheep fat, uh, and that's how candles were made for a thousand years. The, what we think of today as wax candles would have been very expensive throughout history. If you think of harvesting beeswax from a beehive, it could be a very tricky process and there's not that much wax there. Candles as we know them today became much more popular beginning in the 1800s when people were able to begin collecting oil from whales as well as taking oil out of the ground. Uh, and the wax that we know of today is often derived from all different types of oil products. Uh, so today we're going to be making uh, a traditional dipped candle, the type of candle that would have been made throughout history, a very simple process. And then Tracy will show us how she makes some wonderful, wonderful scented candles uh, with Perry Boyce. So Tracy, in the pot here, uh, we've melted some basic paraffin wax. And what we're going to do, we each have a candle wick tied to a stick. A candle wick is a piece of braided string. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna dip it in this pot of melted wax. 
And then we're gonna dip it in this bin of cold water. And as we go from wax to water and wax to water, we're gonna see this candle get bigger and bigger and bigger. You wanna go? Yeah, sure. Well, you dip first. You got it. Dip it in the wax and then into the water. We'll alternate here. When you go in the wax, I'll go in the water. Got it. The whole process of making a dipped candle does take about five minutes. I'm just pulling it taut so it stays nice and straight and doesn't get curled up. Any of that extra wax, we could just pull right off. I like to tie a little knot at the end of the wick and it helps that wax gather on there. Similar to how you might find a little metal disc at the bottom of a modern candle wick. In just a few dips, they're already starting to get bigger. You can see it's now not just a piece of string, it stays nice and straight as the wax builds up. One tip I always tell people making candles at home is that it's important to let the wax cool off slightly before you start dipping. If the wax is too hot, all the wax that's built up on the wick will melt right back off into the pot. So you want it to cool off just a little bit before you actually start making your candle. Yours is growing so much faster than mine. <laughs> yeah. I think it's because I got a few of those wax bits on there. can definitely be a little arm workout for the day going back and forth for five minutes definitely definitely if you are considering making candles at home with your family I just recommend you always do it with adult supervision because this can be hot at the Lefferts Historic House in Prospect Park we generally start making candles with kids about six years old Wow, yours is really starting to shape up. <laughs> yeah. At this point, since we have gloves on, you can even give it a little squeeze if you want to kind of smooth it out and get rid of some of those lumps. It's very malleable when it's warm. Awesome. Can I give it a few more dips? Yeah. I think you won the candle race making today, Tracy. Yeah. <laughs> Seeing this makes you really think about other small businesses that are doing the dip candles. Yeah. And now you can appreciate like the price points that these things are at, like how much work actually goes into it for one candle. Definitely. And throughout history, this is what, how people would have illuminated their homes. So it would have been a family process to gather together to make candles. Wow. So you had enough uh, candles to get you through the winter and to illuminate your house during some of the darker seasons. I can totally see this as a quarantine activity for parents and kids alike. Probably end up doing this with my niece. <laughs> 
it's definitely a nice touch whether you're having a nice dinner or a birthday or some sort of occasion to be able to light a handmade candle. Exactly. I think the birthday candle idea is a really good one because it's smaller and it will be a really quicker process. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you give it another dip and uh, we'll we'll shape it up and we'll call it a wrap because uh, that's looking pretty great to me. Yeah. If you are gonna burn your hand-dipped candles at home, I also recommend you do it under supervision. Because they're handmade, you wanna keep an eye on it so they don't tip over or anything like that. They're not perfectly, perfectly balanced like a store-bought tapered candle might be. And how long would it take for this to cure? Uh, like generally, it? I do it overnight. Overnight? Okay. Yeah. I know it's soy wax is a little bit longer. How long did the soy candles cure for? Um, I cure my soy candle, soy coconut wax candles for five days minimum. Okay. Um, sometimes more, um, depending on how many orders are there, there there are. But five days is the minimum that I cure them for. And it allows, and that's another thing. If you're working with fragrance, it allows the fragrance to really seep in and really. That itself. makes sense. That makes sense. If you're doing an unscented candle, clearly you don't really have to wait for that cure time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your candle looks so good. And I guess because they're pretty malleable, you can just roll them on the table and exactly. smooth it out. Exactly. Okay. maybe we could put it to the side and we'll let it cool off before we cut that candle off yeah. the stick. Here, I'll take that from you. Yeah. yeah. All right, Tracy, we've seen my way of making a candle. I'm really excited to learn about your process now. Yeah, of course. So I'm just gonna grab the... Sure, I could bring that over for us. Okay. Uh, other way. Yeah. Okay, so as you can see, candle making is, there are definitely many ways to go about it. Um, my way of doing it is I have this wax melter that I purchased online. It has a little, um, uh, what would you call it? Like the, the plug side mm -hmm. with a therm thermometer gauge and it has a spigot on the other side that allows you to just, as it melts, you can just pour it out easily. So without you can having control the exact temperature yes. you're melting the wax. You can control the exact temperature. I usually, for this pot, this pot usually holds about, this is it. 10 pound wax melter. Mm -hmm. I've been able to squeeze te uh, 13 pounds in here wow. when it's fully melted. Um, try not to do that though because it does seem to work. Um, so what we're gonna do is I have a scale here and we're gonna be doing eight ounce candles in these jars. So first, can you use any jar you have at home for this? You can use any jar you have as long as it's glass or ceramic, you just can't do uh, paper clearly, <laughs> but um, anything that's not flammable will do really well. Right. Um, so first, I'm gonna have us clean out our jars, okay. and I have I have some alcohol in a spray bottle. Mm -hmm. There you go. Thank you. So what you do is you just spray a few sprays, okay, and just wipe it out, just to get any dust particles out of the glass don't want any reason to cause a fire hazard whatsoever. Um, if this is for your own personal use, what you can do is just blow into the jar to blow off the dust in lieu of a spray bottle. And then what we're gonna do is you're gonna grab your wick. Okay. Now, this is similar to the wick that we use for the dip candle. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the, the little tabs. Yeah. This, what you, this is used to um, help center the wick in the jar. So what we, so when you put it in the middle of the jar, you see that it, um, as you pour the wax in, it's gonna hold that in place. Okay. But 
sometimes some people, if it's a longer wig, mm -hmm. they'll tie it around a, a twig or something and then they put it in and then pour the wax like that. Gotcha. So those you can use also with the um, the cylinder, those handles that you see in the store, those cylinder ones. Mm -hmm. You can do a whole bunch of different colors um, and things like that. Um, so what I have, we're going to use the little wax tap stickers. Okay. I personally use a glue gun at home just for convenience um, and it makes it a lot more easier for me because sometimes I pour at a higher temperature. Yeah. So what you're going to do is just put stick that right on the bottom of it and it's a perfect fit. Yeah. And then you're going to peel that tab back okay. and aim to put it right in the center of the jar or as close to the center as you can. And you can either use your fingers to press down or you can use a popsicle stick as well to press down. Gotcha. Popsicle sticks are really so much better for the kiddos if they can just grab it like, okay, this works. Just so those ones that want to do it all by themselves. That's great. That helps make sure that our wick is right perfectly in the center. Exactly. So now what you're going to do, put your jar aside. Okay. And now we have a pitcher. You're going to place the pitcher on the scale. Turn it on, make sure that everything's at zero. And what we're gonna do is grab the pitcher and fill it up until you hit 7.5 ounces of okay. wax. Now this wax is already pre-melted. Um, the A good pouring temp is between 140 and 160 okay. degrees Fahrenheit. Um, simply because when you wanna add the oil, you don't, it can't be too hot, otherwise the oils will evaporate. Oh, yeah. very interesting. So a lot of people use fragrance oils or essential oils or both. I'm one of the few that use both. Okay. Um, and I do that because when you're making scented candles, although a lot of, there is a, a say that essential candles, essential oil candles are cleaner burning, mm -hmm. but there are also natural fragrance oils that you can use. Um, and the thing that I don't particularly care for about essential oil candles only is because um, sometimes you have to use a lot of essential oils in there mm -hmm. and it's tricky with making it. You can have a good day, you can have a bad day, sometimes you just don't know and you and they're more, way more highly flammable than okay. a regular fragrance oil candle. Yeah. So a fragrance oil is actually a mix of essential oils and other fragrances. Um, with a base carrier oil, and they use that to like ex like make it really more um, potent. Cool. So this just needs a little bit more. Does it make it more stable, so the, a higher temperature won't necessarily evaporate it or degrade the scent? Not necessarily, but you could use less fragrance oil for. Um, let's say for this candle in particular, we'll be doing half an ounce of fragrance oil. Mm -hmm. If I want it, if I put a half an ounce of essential oil in here, it will not scent it as strongly. Okay. You need that boost of extra fragrance and the base oil sure. in there. So this is at 7.5. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna t open up these two scents. We have a Caribbean teak wood. And these fragrance oils, you can be purchased online at any candle maker store. You can walk into a Michaels and grab some fragrance oils. Or if you have essential oils, you can usually mix it. So for my candles on the side here, I use a mix of the fragrance oils, oils and then I get a few essential oils and I boost the scent. Oh, I can smell that as you soon as you it. open the bottle. The second bottle. I open it, see? You so. all wish you were here smelling this. <laughs> so we have some pipettes here. Okay. So you're gonna fill this up until it hits um, eight ounces. Okay. And what you're gonna do is you can choose how many or how little of each oil that you want. I'm just gonna do a random assort assortment here. do three droppers full of this yeah. and then put the remainder of the Caribbean tea board. Yeah. And this one's really good. <laughs> just a little bit more. We're measuring this to get exactly eight ounces so it fits perfectly in the jar that we have. Yes. And then you're gonna grab that same popsicle stick you used earlier. And what you're gonna do is stir it. I I would say stir for at least 30 to 45 seconds. Mm -hmm. um, I make larger batches of this, so I never really make them in this small of a batch. Um, one batch for me will pour about 12 to 15 of these jars. Okay. So I usually stir for two minutes at that point. Just to make sure that oil is yeah. evenly mixed. Evenly distributed, everything. making sure that it's very well absorbed in the oil, in the wax. 
Um, Cause what can happen is, let's say you pour the oil in and then you, sometimes when you look, you know how oil and water doesn't mix? Yeah. And you can see the swirls in there. Yeah, totally. That happens in candle making oh, too. Oh wow, I didn't even realize that. So you that. can use that as a uh, factor to say, okay, this is not well mixed yet. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so because I've been doing this for a while now, I've just timed everything. <laughs> so 30, 45 seconds is perfect for individual candles. And then if it's a larger batch, I do it for two minutes straight. Again, an arm workout <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> Have you always been interested in candle making and different crafts like this? Not candle making specifically, no. Mm -hmm. But I actually started in 2016 mm -hmm. over the summer and I told myself, okay, what can I do? I knew I always wanted to do a home decor company and I just wasn't sure how to start it. And I figured candle making seems easy. Let's just do this. I was wrong. <laughs> in the beginning, it was totally not easy. There's like this feeling in um, the candle making community that nobody wants to share their secrets how to make a candle and how to make a smooth top or remove the wet spots on the sides um, and that annoyed me so um, when I first got into candle making I said okay I watched a whole bunch of videos on YouTube googled my heart out and I found my own way of making it and it just worked for me and it's been working all these years of course it's still a work in progress there are definitely some days and some batches where all the all my cows are completely horrible <laughs> and there are days when it's like perfect on the first pour. it's like oh this is beautiful um but it's definitely a work in progress it's like daily training like practicing and practicing always learning and always growing exactly there's yeah. so many factors that go into it um in terms of how how to create a perfect candle uh, but of course, perfect is objective, subjective to who you are. <laughs> well, thanks for te teaching us some of your secret recipe today. Yeah. So now when you, you're gonna place your glass back on the scale mm -hmm. and press the power button to clear it to zero. Mm -hmm. And then we're just gonna pour it in slowly. And you wanna be mindful with how you're pouring it as well. If you pour it too fast, you'll end up with air bubbles and then you'll end up with little pits and divots in the candle when it hardens. Uh, and there are, there is a way to fix that, but yeah. Okay, so we actually made enough to do two batches. Awesome. So this is perfect. So now we have another popsicle stick. This one has a hole in it. I see. Then we're just gonna pop the wick straight through the hole. Ah. And there we go. So we have a hole in our popsicle stick. We're gonna thread the wick through there and it's gonna make sure it stays nice and straight as the wax is cooling. Yes. And then, voila. We're just gonna wait for that to harden. And then you're gonna put your glass yeah. down and you can pour Thank you. the remaining. Nice and slow so there's no air bubbles. Exactly. You can just keep pouring. All the way? All right. I guess we measured it, so it's exactly enough. I don't have yep. to worry too much. And there you go. That's it. Perfect. And now, because, and the best thing about this is because the popsicle stick is completely flat, mm -hmm. it won't dip into the actual wax, so it'll still right. set pretty smoothly. Right. It's pretty simple to thread that through there. And of course, if you don't have a there popsicle stick, you can also use a clothespin. I tend to use clothespins when I'm making my larger batches and that allows me to pull it a little bit more taut and just have it all there. So I have like hundreds of clothespins in my office, just all clothespins, um, but they work perfectly. Awesome. How long and, does these take to cool? These usually take um, about an hour to an hour and a half to cool off, to, to harden, I mean. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then after that, you wait five days for it to fully cure and for the essential, for the oils to really solidify and, and like melt into the wax. That takes time to marinate yeah. almost, and all really mixed exactly. together, yeah. Yeah, so patience is key. Um, so have it sitting there for five days at least, and then when you're done, what you can do is just, you can get either a pair of scissors, or I have a wood trimmer here, mm -hmm. which is perfect for candles because it has little grooves in there. 
that if you light a candle and then you trim it, it'll catch whatever black soot is there. Okay. So it won't fall into the candle. And keep create the a candle fire. looking beautiful, keep it safe. Exactly. And I have a finished version here. Oh, well, there you go. Beautiful. Finished version. So this wick hasn't been trimmed yet, so I'm gonna have you trim it, actually. Oh, very, so very cool. what are you gonna do? I've never used one of these. Do I yeah, just, so how close do this. I clip it? Um, so you want it at least a quarter of an inch thick high. Okay. So you can pretty much eyeball it. Yep, that okay. should be fine. Yep. There we and go. There you go. Finished candle. Yes. And then all you do is pop this back on. Perfect for gifting for your kids, your, your kids' favorite teacher. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing this with us today, Tracy. Thanks for having me. This is fun. To meet you. Yeah. Yes, you as well. Thank you, guys. Welcome back. We hope you enjoyed the program. For those of you who missed our introductions, I am Maria Carrasco, the Vice President of Public Programs with Prospect Park Alliance, the nonprofit that sustains Prospect Park, Brooklyn's backyard. We have partnered with the Flatbush based cultural organization, Caribbean to celebrate Caribbean American Heritage Month. This event also marks the launch of Pop-Up Lefferts, our new program that brings the fun activities we offer at the park's historic house on the road, while the house undergoes restoration later this year. I would like to thank our sponsor, New York Presbyterian Brooklyn Methodist Hospital for their support of this program. I would also like to thank Rafe Schaefer and our friends at Caribbean, Kenya Cummings, Jean-Luc Stanislas, Shelley Worrell, Nadine Shelton, for their great work on this program. Kenya will now start the Q&A segment of our program with our guest, Tracy Boyce, founder and creative director of Perry Boyce. Kenya? Hi, so just to like reiterate, I am Kenya Cummings, the special projects coordinator for Caribbean. Um, so you kind of touched on it in your video. So have you always been a DIY person? What kind of started you to want to experiment with candle making? Okay, so when I was younger, for as long as I can remember, I've always been into art. Um, I've always been found like doing in my notebook, literally daydreaming in classes. I remember getting in trouble for that. <laughs> um, and I actually went to school for graphic design and illustration as well as studio art. Um, so prior to me starting the camera company, I was very heavily into my own visual art. Um, as a mixed media artist. And I knew I wanted to um, just go into business for myself. And I knew it had to be somewhat art rela related or craft related. I knew I'd be either making something or designing something. Um, at the time I was starting with um, working with a small business out in Greenpoint, a skincare company. And it was also woman owned and women run. Um, it was literally just me, the owner, and another assistant. Um, and I loved that. I loved the fact that she did everything herself. Um, and so that actually inspired me to go into business on my own. But in the, like I said in the video, I wasn't sure how to go about it. I knew I wanted a home decor company. I just wasn't sure how to start it. Um, and then I started looking up like ways and other items within the home decor category. And I was like, okay, fragrances. Um, my parents have, are both of Caribbean descent. They're both from Guyana. So scent plays a really huge role in our house <laughs> growing up. <laughs> like whether it's in a good way or maybe a not so good way when your mom's up at six in the morning cooking um, fried fish and then you end up going to school <laughs> like fried fish. <laughs> there was no real way to mask that scent. Mm -hmm. So that was always a huge, huge benefactor in the house. Um, it, and I thought about it, I was like, okay, definitely gonna go into fragrances. How about candles? And when you watch DIY videos of candle making, they make it look so easy. <laughs> they do, <laughs> Yeah, so it makes you feel like, okay, I, anybody can do this. I can do this, no problem. <laughs> so, like you see videos of people using Crayola um, crayons <laughs> to make candles. And I'm like, and you could just do that, but it gets trickier once you try to add scent. Um, and I didn't realize that. So my very first candle I've ever made was the saffron and ginger candle in my line. And I kid you not, the first time I made it, I hated it so much. <laughs> and I literally threw it in my closet, kept it there for like two months. I didn't touch it. I was like, I'm not, I hate this. I, I, I can't do this. But I didn't give up. Um, 
and I just kept practicing and learning and growing as I went along until, um, like I said, two months later, I went back to the scent and I re-poured it and it was pretty good. Um, I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> I looks like I did something. This is great. Um, and I tested it out at my first ever market in October, 2017. And it was a major hit. It ended up being the top seller for like two years running. Uh, so yeah, so I got pumped. Right? <laughs> yeah, so I definitely felt special. And I felt great because of that. Um, but in terms of DIY, I've always been a maker in general. That's great. Uh, so this is a question. Um, what is your favorite thing about growing up and living in Brooklyn and now having a business in Brooklyn? Um, I love, for me personally, I love the community. Um, Brooklyn is such a difference like just in in every aspect the look of Brooklyn because we're so diverse in all the different neighborhoods but it doesn't matter what neighborhood you go to there's everyone has this this Brooklyn attitude about them like this Brooklyn way of thinking like um my favorite part growing up was going to the bodegas and all the corner stores and going to the, the um going to the park in the summertime we had this where I lived it was like this garage area in the building and it was like somebody turned it it's like a makeshift icy shop Ooh. so every summer we always got those 10 cent icies and the 10 cent juice the chubby juice the chub juices yeah. and it was amazing like it was every summer like clockwork always just running to get it making sure that you were the first person there to get the best ones and I was always obsessed with like cherry flavored anything. <laughs> so, and that was always the first one to go. The blue raspberry, you know what I'm talking about. The, the, yeah. like, it was always gone. <laughs> and you always hated yourself when you got stuck with like the, um, not the grape, but like maybe the orange was like the second best or like the blue yeah. raspberry. Like, it was like no, the cherry lemon ones. Orange. You're like, I want those. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So mm -hmm. I love that feeling. And knowing that there are like kid versions of the speakeasies, you know, like these are what yeah. kids, like kids, we, we knew, we knew where to go to get the goods. <laughs> um, <it's been laughs> as adults, we know like, okay, if you want, if you want looking for something very specific, like, oh no, I, I got a guy, I got a guy or I know a guy. <laughs> yeah. right, or I know so someone, like, I know someone. Exactly. Don't worry about it. I got you. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's definitely my favorite part. Great. Um, so as you know, like with COVID-19 and the Black Lives Matter movement, small businesses have been greatly affected. What, are you, what do you think are some ways people can start supporting small businesses or anything they can really start doing, just little ways to kind of get people to really start supporting their own small business around? Yeah, of course. So definitely, I think what I would love people to understand when it comes time to support a small business um, is do what you would normally do for all the larger companies. So if you get like a Gucci bag, you show it off on a gram, don't you? So why not show off, show us off. Um, you don't have to shop with us per se, but like ask us, like we're very open to like explaining different ways you can support us. Um, everyone in this day and age, every small business that I know of at least are heavily active on social media and social media is a new word of mouth. So definitely like just grab a post from our page and just reshare it. Like, and be honest, like, hey, I haven't tried this, this product out yet, but this seems cool. Um, or maybe I'm not a candle person, but I know some of my followers may be, hey, let me repost this. Mm -hmm. um, because we greatly, greatly appreciate it. I know with the whole Black Lives Matter movement, um, when it kicked back into gear last month, like we were inundated with a whole bunch of orders and we're super, super grateful. And we've just been resharing other businesses as well. You just kind of want to spread the love because sometimes, like I, um, I mentioned earlier um, with a friend that I was speaking to that I'm not as heavy into content making on social media as I should be. Um, and it's really hard for me to do that when you're a one woman show and you're taking care of all the other aspects of your business. Like social media is just another hurdle added to the list of me forcing, making, designing, doing everything for the company. Social media is just an added job. Yeah. So, and, and I know it's not just me. I know other makers who are the same way. So I personally believe the best way to help us out is to promote us on social media. 
Um, we don't all have budgets to run an, a targeted ad um, or the, just it comes down to we just don't have the time. In between making order, making and, and shipping out all the orders, we really have no time to sit back and say, let me play around on Instagram today. Let me, let me look at all these pretty pictures. Let me share this. Um, so the more you tag us, the greater um, our help will be. It's really, really helpful, helpful. And it gives us content as well to reshare and repost later on when we're in a bind. So honestly, I feel like that's the best thing you can do. You don't have to spend your dollars, but if you can spend your time just reposting a single thing, it just takes a few seconds. And it does a great, great, big deal of like promotion for us. Yeah, social media is very powerful and some people don't really get that and it's, it's mm -hmm. free. So like, even if you don't have money to spend on the product, you're like, you know what? I support this. I really want to get this out here. I really want more people to know about it. So yeah, definitely post, share as much as you can. It's, Mm -hmm. it's as simple as that. Absolutely. Yeah. That's great. So Tracy, what is your favorite Perry Boys product and why? Um, my favorite product is our Dragon and Heart candle. Um, and let me tell you why. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know how everyone had, well, generally speaking, a lot of people associate the scent of lavender with a calming effect. So the scents that are in the Dragon Heart candle does that for me what mm -hmm. lavender does to most people. Because there's um, cedar wood, there is a bit of lavender in there. So it's cedar wood, lavender, patchouli, orange, clove, all of those scents, um, I think of it like a sensual weighted blanket. Mm. If that makes sense. Yep. Um, um, so it's such a heavy scent and it's definitely not for everyone. Um, even myself, sometimes if I use a spray, the spray is definitely a bit strong, even stronger than a candle when you're spraying it on the targeted air surface. Um, sometimes that overpowers me, but in a good way. <laughs> um, but it definitely helps me relax after a long day of doing whatever I'm doing. Um, and it's just that calming scent. It's like the last thing I want to smell before I go to bed, um, just to de-stress. Mm -hmm. And also a quick note is all of those scents that are in the Dragon Heart candle is actually mimicked after the Dragon's Blood incense scent that you would find in those um those type any store that you can find Dragon's Blood incense. It's mimicked after that scent. So you have that scent burning and it's just a very, very relaxing scent. I love it. It's, and that's something that we all need right now. Yes, yes. absolutely. Relax and you know, I'm going to put it on my weighted blanket. I'm going to scent that. <laughs> oh, that would be perfect, you see? And you make it a literal, a literal weighted blanket. Exactly. That would be perfect. <laughs> Definitely. So when you come up with like the scents, do you kind of just come up with them with yourselves or do you sometimes take like suggestions from like your customers who are kind of like, hey, I think this would be like a great scent to kind of make or do you kind of just work with what you like? I mean, so far, um, I haven't gotten too many suggestions from customers, which is odd considering, but I guess that's a good thing because that means that my friends are pretty good. They don't yeah, they're like, yeah, these like, are good. They're going to stick with these. Like, we're fine. <laughs> but um, the, the way I come up with a sense is um, I look at my suppliers' websites and I grab um, like one ounce samples from everyone and I literally just test it out. I find... Um, mm -hmm. I go through all the scents that they can offer that I think would like sound really nice. And then I smell it, we do a smell test. And then I put aside all the ones that I like. And then I sit back, I'm like, okay, so out of all the ones that I like, which two, which ones seem like they could be paired with something else or um, how, or would smell better if I just boosted this one scent that they carried in that oil. And then I go from there. And then based on whatever scent is giving me, whatever feelings that's giving me, I come up with a name. So for example, with the Concrete Jungle Candle, I knew it's actually named after this dream that I had a while back when I was working <laughs> on my bachelor <laughs> thesis. Um, it was such a weird dream, but I was in my childhood neighborhood and it's like buildings everywhere, like literally concrete everywhere. Um, but then I guess there was like a fire or something. It was kind of almost apocalyptic in a sense. Um, but I promise I'm going somewhere good with this. <laughs> so I like hopped into a car, a Jeep, 
uh, to be specific with these other random people that were like running and I hopped in the Jeep with them. And as the Jeep was driving away, I was looking behind us trying to see this the smoke was catching up with us. But instead of catching up with us, it was actually morphing into a jungle. So we went from literally from the concrete straight up into the jungle. And I actually did an art piece on that for my thesis. And then years later, I'm thinking about like the scent. I'm like, concrete jungle. That's brilliant. Like, <laughs> like this. This is it. <laughs> I, that, that's, the, that's it. That's 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 the scent. That's the candle. Um, and I actually thought about it really hard. And I said, what scents do you find in the jungle? Um, and I knew I wanted to be like some type of plant, grassy, with some florals, um, maybe smell wet, if that's like a thing. Yeah, um, I, I, under, I understand. Like, yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> just like it's hard to like, explain, but I understand what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, like a rock, like a wet rock <laughs> kind of vibe. <laughs> um, yeah. So I found a few oils and I blended them together until I got like what I felt was like the perfect scent. Um, and then I let my husband smell it and he lost his ever-loving mind. He loves it. That's his favorite scent that I've ever done. Um, and then I put it out there in the markets and people responded really, really well to it. So much so that that actually knocked the saffron ginger off the top selling list and oh. that became a top seller now. And I was like, okay, this is great. <laughs> I love it. Um, but generally, like, it can go either way. Um, it's either I um, find something based on the oils that I already have, or I think of something and I'm like, what does it smell like? How can I recreate this? How can I make this match the vision in my head for people to like feel? Because at the end of the day, it's all about experiences. So when you smell something, what does that trigger for you? And you just go with it. <laughs> That's awesome. So Tracy, can you tell us um, something unusual or unique about yourself? Um, how about myself? Um, I mentioned earlier with, with the concrete jungle candle and even with all some of my other scents that have florals and stuff in it. Um, I love the scents. However, I am practically allergic to all of nature. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. So that's my way of getting one step closer to nature because I can't physically be there. Yeah. Otherwise, I'll probably break out hives or something. But um, I love the smells that they offer without having to deal with that side effect of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but in common, I am also allergic to everything nature, and I have ha spent 27 years in pr working in Prospect Park. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <my> nature, so <laughs> yeah. I understand how you feel. It's basically like against all odds. You're not going to let stop me from embracing yep. this and enjoying what everyone else enjoys. Yep. Um, and you're kind of just telling your body, no, you're going to listen to me. I'm in control. This is what's going to happen. <laughs> So I know you said that you made your like first candle and it was a saffron and ginger candle and you pretty much completely hated it. Did you ever have like a really horrible candle making fail? And then if you did, how did you kind of work through that? Since you said you were in the beginning of it and you kind of were learning how to put things yeah. together and how to work since they always make it so easy on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so for the longest time when I first started, um, because this September actually makes four years officially um that I started putting the candles out in the market um but when I first started for like maybe the first two years probably I would I mentioned in the video like if you pour too fast you can get holes and divots and the top isn't smooth so for the first two years I didn't know what to do with that um <laughs> so I had all these candles just sitting there and I'm like what am I gonna do so I was literally just using them in my house or giving it away to my family members or like just burning them at my dad's house like just to get rid of them because I figured I can't sell these. Um, nobody wants a candle with a hole in it. How are you going to sell that and market it? Um, so I actually met a few other candle makers that I've become really close with and we all shared tips and tricks to um, like making the candles and, and making our business work. And one of the key things that I took away from a tip that they gave me was you can save those candles. <laughs> and I ended up saving a ton of money just by investing in a heat gun. So um, I thought in the beginning when they said heat, you could apply heat to the top to remelt the top and smooth it out. I thought maybe I can use a blow dryer 
Um, and that was a horrible, horrible move. Oh. Um, because it's just blowing air instead air, of air. heat. So wax literally got everywhere because I kept trying. I thought I was doing it wrong. <laughs> um, but I, I was doing it wrong, but I was just using the wrong tool. Um, so I actually invested in the heat gun and I was able to smooth out all of those remaining tops. And I was like, this is perfect. I just saved myself hundreds of dollars of wasted product just sitting here on the shelves that I can't sell. Um, and I guess another fail would be mixing the wrong oils, <laughs> making a huge disaster, putting the wrong amount of oil in one candle. And you're like, oh my God, <laughs> like, what did I just do? Jasmine does not go in this candle. <laughs> what am I going to do? I just made a batch and of like 12 candles. Um, and now I have 12 candles that I can't sell because I'm not doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, so those usually end up being gifts. <laughs> if, <laughs> yeah, it, if it good, it, it ends up being a gift. I just don't put a label on there. I said, unknown, just a gold tin, <laughs> do it as you wish, you know? Um, it's you. fine. Or <laughs> if it's just a candle, like the amber and wood, if I put too much of one thing in there, I'm like, okay, it still works. Um, but in the beginning, I used to do really, really micro batches where I just did six candles at a time, six medium candles or three large candles at a time. Mm -hmm. um, so it wasn't as bad. But as I invested in a wax melter and then I upgraded to a larger wax melter, I started doing it in batches of 12 medium or six large um, or even just a little higher than that. Um, so once you go for a higher batch, you definitely have to pay more attention. So I'm pretty anal about it when I'm like in the moment and I'm making the product. I'm like, okay, what am I doing? And there have been times that I'm like, oh crap, did I add this oil already? And I'm smelling it. <laughs> I'm like, it kind of smells like it, like it, but I'm not sure. Uh, I'm going to put this all to the side. <laughs> I'm just going to wait on that. that. I did it the right way. <laughs> so I've definitely made mistakes where I thought I added an oil and then when it sets and cures over the five days and I go back to it, I'm like, I smell nothing. Oh my God. I, oh uh, my God. I made unscented candles. What did I do? <laughs> like <laughs> so now I just like, like you guys have a lighted can a little candle. So like, right. Nothing you can do. Except just, and I've learned along the way, just laugh at yourself. It's okay. <laughs> I don't have to take everything so seriously. It's, um, right. Of course, if you're spending a lot of money on it, then it's an issue, but because I do everything in micro batches, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. If I make a mistake, at most, it'll be 12 medium candles ruined. And I can just use that to light in case of a blackout, you know? Mm. Right, right. So, like, yeah, it's, it's a nice little alternative. Yeah, it's fine. Um, do you have any advice for someone thinking of pursuing their passion project as a full-time gig? I would suggest that they just weigh their options and go for it if it makes sense and mm -hmm. i don't mean makes sense as in they think people will buy it but i mean if it makes sense for your current living situation um because it does take a lot a lot of patience and you have to have that you have to have that drive to really say if you go through you have to be willing to take constructive criticism because keep everyone at this point will be your customer that you're pitching it to. Um, and you have to know that not every no is personal. Mm -hmm. um, in the beginning, I would get really beat up on myself. Like, oh my gosh, I didn't, I didn't make any money at this market. This is horrible. But then I took like a business course at um, Weibo actually, uh, workshops in business opportunities. Um, they're like low cost and it's really helpful to community and entrepreneurs. And I took the course and I realized, oh, not every no is a bad thing. It's just not your target audience. Yeah. Not everyone is your customer. And that's a lot of things that people don't understand or like conceptualize it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really true and honest. Like not everyone will be a customer. If a lady passes by and says, oh, I don't like this. And she just puts it down. It could be a variety of reasons. It, it, could, it doesn't necessarily mean that this is a horrible scent or this is a horrible packaging. She could be a person that only likes, let's say, like really sweet and sugary scents. 
right. or I say they're used to the um, Bath and Body Works candle sale. Mm -hmm. That's really a huge thing because when they see you can buy a huge candle for like five bucks and then you get like a tiny candle for me for like $14. They're like, no, I'm not doing that. That's a waste of money. When in all actuality, they don't understand commerce and how it works because Bath and Body Works can afford to have those sales because there is the cost of those candles to make is pennies on a dollar. So they make huge amounts of it. And I learned that from working with the skincare company that I worked at. Um, when I saw that these small artisanal companies, they charge their fees because their supplies are extremely expensive mm -hmm. and exclusive. And because we don't get the deals as small businesses that these major businesses get. And we probably never will unless we order like a billion products, a billion like jars um, then we'll get the deal of like pennies on the dollar. But for me, I can't, I can't like do that. I can't sell a candle for $5 because it doesn't make sense. My cost to make it costs way more. Right. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, so I did. So like, I would say just definitely weigh your option. Yeah. Yeah. Um, someone did ask, um, so how long, cause I know there's some candles that kind of can burn for like hours and some can burn for a couple minutes so how long does like what's the burn time on your candles and like how long do they normally last okay so my smallest candle that i offer are the minis mm -hmm. those are two ounce candles and it's a, all my candles are soy and coconut wax based so mm -hmm. the two ounce size burns for roughly eight to ten hours whoa um you burn it for <laughs> no more than an hour at a time because the smaller the container that the candle is in the less time you should burn it at a time. Mm. Um, I know I, that. I, okay. yeah, I, nobody knows this. Like, <laughs> I, I, do not, I did not know a single thing about candle care until I got into it. But there are actual rules to follow to care for a candle. Oh. Just how you care for a plant. You care for an animal. There are rules. You have to take care of it. Um, so, like I said, the two ounce burns for eight to ten hours. The medium candle is four and a half ounces also a coconut and soy wax, and those burn for, in the beginning, I tested it, it was 15 to 20 hours, but it's been known to go longer than 20 hours. So at this point, I usually tell people it's 20 plus hours, depending yeah. on how often you're burning it and how long each burn is. So for the medium candles, I usually recommend no more than two to three hours at a time. Um, again, because it's a small container, you don't want to overheat the container and cause a fire hazard. Um, so when you first light a candle, you have to make sure that the entire top is melted before blowing it out. And that's because if you don't wait and you blow it out before the wax pool hits the edges of the container mm -hmm. and you blow it out, when you go to relight it, it's only gonna melt that middle part because wax has a memory and it creates a tunneling effect those outer edges were never melted to begin with. So now you change your candle to only burn in that pool and it's just gonna go straight down and you end up destroying your candle. Um, no, I've done that a million times. Everyone has, I have done it too. I, we're oh all guilty. God. Just, <laughs> yeah, we're all candle murderers on the road. Yes, I've murdered <laughs> um, candles. Yeah, so it's like- I just let my candle burn and I'm like, oh, this smells nice. Exactly. You, think you know, when you get a candle and you're so excited to light it, and then you're yeah. like, oh no, I have an appointment, I gotta go run now, and you blow it out. And you leave. Yes. I guarantee you're probably gonna <laughs> mess, you're gonna get a messed up candle. Um, of course, there's a way to save it. You can maybe carve out the edges, but that's not really doing much saving because that wax is now wasted. Unless you want to carve out the edges, make it flat again on the top, saving, leaving the wick in place, and then remelt. The, the shavings in a container you can use as a wax melt. Another DIY project. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Hey, it works. Save your candle, um, DIY. <laughs> yeah. So then, and my last size candle that I have is a large size, and that's um, nine ounces. Those burn for 40 plus hours. Wow. Mm -hmm. And again, I recommend like two to three hours of a burn time on those. That's great. Uh, do you uh, have any exciting projects in the works you'd be willing to share with us for 2021? Um, yes, actually. <laughs> um, not necessarily for 2021, but 
I do have the intention of going into textiles with the company. Oh. So again, bringing in my background in visual arts, I do want to bring that into the companies more. And that was my original goal to create patterns and, and, and have them printed on different fabrics and then pick those fabrics and make home goods. So make pillowcases. So think pillowcases, um, throws, um, maybe some tea towels for the kitchen, maybe some shower curtains and bath towels, things like that. So that's definitely going to be bring, being brought in. I'm just still conceptualizing it and figuring things out. Maybe we'll do a GoFundMe at some point in the future <laughs> to help with that. But yeah, that's definitely the goal. <laughs> wow. That sounds awesome. So how can people order your products? Like where can they find you on Instagram, your website, oh, anything? Yeah. So if you go to the Instagram page, you can click our link in bio. Um, and it has the shop link or about the brand and things like that. It takes you directly to our website. Um, also in our bio and on the website, there are a list of stockists and stores that are carrying our candles. Um, I'm working to upgrade, update the website to mention that each store sells so you know where you're going because not all of my stores sell all of the scents. Um, oh, and then on top of that, recently I moved two of the scents to online only that you can only get that from me. Um, that's the Clean Slate and the Dragon Heart. Mm -hmm. um, so the other seven scents you will be able to find in store. Um, or you can just hit me up and I usually post if I have any market upcoming markets, you can just come through to our market, um, place your order and you can request that it be picked up at a market or picked up at one of the stores. You can contact them directly as well. We're pretty flexible. <laughs> so um, how did you come up with the name for your business? Um, I actually lucked out in a major way. <laughs> Perry Boyce is actually my family's name. So oh, okay. Perry is my mother's maiden name and then Boyce is my dad's surname. So mm -hmm. I lucked out majorly because it sounds amazing together. Yeah. Like, it does. Ew. It really does. It just, it's a nice, it's just, and it's, it's short and simple and sweet. It's like, this is nice. It's exactly. not too long, not too short. And it's I played great. around with it because I knew I wanted to name it after my family. Um, I almost went with Boyce Perry. Honestly, that was my first go around. I'm like, Boyce Perry. That's it. That's the name. That's it. It's, it's fine. But then I flipped it one day and I was like, Perry Boyce. Wait a minute. You're like, ooh, I got that something here. Flows. That flows. I think I, I, think I did something. <laughs> huh? That flows. I like the way that flows, Perry yeah. Boyce. It just, it just made sense. And I, and I ran it by like my dad, um, who still lives in New York and my mom who's out in Virginia. And they were like, this is really nice. Yeah, go for it. That's fine. And I was like, essentially I have a hashtag that I use when I post products and anything related to the company. And that's, we are Perry boys mm. because growing up as with any, as in any West Indian household in particular or Caribbean household, um, the mom always ends up adopting all of her kids' friends <laughs> um, and bringing them into the family. I'm like, oh no, that's my daughter. Um, so yeah, all of my fine. friends, uh, exactly. All my all my friends, my mom would ask like, oh, how's my daughter doing? I'm like, which one? <laughs> like, so, so and so. I'm like, oh yeah, she's good. She's good. Or he's good. He's doing great. Like, okay, tell him I said hi. Okay, that's fine. Um, yeah, you just I have like 15 brothers and sisters at this point. <laughs> um, it's all good. Uh, we all love each other. Um, and so when I came up with the phrase, we are Perry boys, initially it was my parents had four kids, um, two boys and two girls. And I had it in my mindset when I first started that we are literally the only people that can say we are Perry boys because we are the product of a Perry and a boys. Yeah. With that specific mm -hmm. um, partnership. Um, but then as um, time went on and I was like, you know what? No, it's not just us. It's everyone. So any person that basically shops with me, you mm -hmm. basically become part of the family. Like you are now a part of the Perry Boys family. You're Perry Boys too. So I started including stickers and everything in the orders. Like, hey, remember you're Perry Boys now. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> hey cousin. <laughs> um, I've literally met people with the same last name as me. Um, you know, whether it be boys or Perry and then and we like just laugh about it and then we go we, when we trace it back. They're either from, um, majority of them are from Barbados or they have a family member from, originated from Barbados. And I'm like, yeah, you're my cousin. You're probably- <laughs> I'm pretty so, sure. Pretty sure. 
Um, so thanks, cuz. Like, <laughs> tell mom I said hey. That's fine. <laughs> um, and it just works out beautifully. So it's definitely a family thing. Okay, well, it is three o'clock and we have actually reached the end of the virtual um, live. Thank you all for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed learning and watching as much as we did. Uh, please join us next week, uh, Sunday, July 12th, for Stories with Caribbean, with, from the Caribbean with Tammy Hall. You can register on the event Bright Link, which can be found at prospectpark.org. Um, again, Tracy, where can they find you to order, to place any orders they would like or um, to kind of see your candles and kind of see the process that you might be kind of starting showing people how to make candles and kind of see yeah. the process? So definitely check us, check out our website. It's www.perryboyce.com and you can find all the information you need there. You can also follow Caribbean at littlecaribbean.nyc and iamcaribbean.com. I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I did and we will see you all next week. Thanks. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you. See ya. Shibari, when I look at 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 Shibari, when I look at